if I look a little disgusted, I learned some new information this morning that uh, my friend uh, Rebecca here has not seen the movie Wayne's World. So I'm a little distraught. There's that. There are multiple excuses that I could use that I'm not going to get into on this meeting. We'll talk offline. <laughs> so we really wanted to uh, to do this webinar briefly. We aren't going to take up all day um, or a lot of your time, but we wanted to discuss some of the important aspects about our safety health and management system. We've been really, really excited about it. We've been working on this for over a year now mm -hmm. since our first meeting. Um, which was pandemic style masked up in a backyard somewhere. But it has really progressed and we're super excited about it. So we're going to get started and make you host. Do you deserve to be host? <laughs> All right, let me find you. There you are. Make her host. There you are. So I will get started by taking a look at our screen here. Could you make me co-host, please? Oh, goodness. Find the little three dots. Your train has derailed. It didn't take long. <laughs> All right. Now, could you uh, enable participant screen sharing? <laughs> Go to your little green, green thing at the bottom, share screen and hit the arrow. Why don't you make Nick co-host? There we go. Now nah, I got it. All right. So let's do this. I am now. Okay. So this is our screen. And we're sharing it. So our healthy safety and health management system. If you notice, this is actually David's brother. Um, we recruited him not too long ago to take this picture. Um, he's not the one that is uh, touching the iPad. He's actually the one whose hand is in here um, with the painted fingernails. So he's a hand model, <laughs> just like Stephen Ironman. That's right. <laughs> so our webinar at a glance, this is what we're going to talk about today. Why safety and health should matter to you? Why should it matter, David? So you don't die or get sick. I hope go. that's self-explanatory. It was. That meant that that last sentence was redundant. Okay. <laughs> uh, what challenges uh, do we find when we are OSHA compliant or what challenges are there in getting to be OSHA compliant really? Um, what is the REIT safety and health management system? And then what features um, are in the safety and health and management system? So it's a mix of videos, but it's a lot more than that. Um, so what makes it a system and not just another video series? So let's pop on into that. Why should safety and health matter to you? What's the answer again? So you don't die at work. There you go. We don't want anyone dying at work or being sick or having long-term illnesses or any of that stuff, right? Yeah. For the most part. The question is, do you? Do you want your employees to die? We hope not. That's why you need to buy the system. Was that too salesy? It was way too dark. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's racist. <laughs> Very I'm nice. Gonna, I'm gonna step off of this podcast. <laughs> we didn't do our line either. No, we didn't. That's all right. Let's just move on. Anyway, the safety of employees should be top priority. Number one reason: lives are at stake, as we've discussed. It's also the law to take measures in order to protect yourself and your employees. Does that mean it's required by law that they have this exact system? No, absolutely not. Dang it. There is. <laughs> The laws refer to you all having your written programs, uh, supplying PPE, things like that. This system is designed to help you keep that all together in basically one giant package, if you will. Right. 
So we're trying to simplify things down. OSHA can be extremely daunting. So we want to put all this together, simplify it to where it's not such a huge burden for companies. But a safety and health management system technically isn't required by law. It just makes things a lot easier. So the written programs are required. Yeah, written programs are required and other things are required. What if you don't have written programs? Then you're not compliant with federal law. And what could happen? Lots of money gets thrown out the window. Don't lose money, folks. Don't lose the money. <laughs> a myth. If I have less than 10 employees, then OSHA doesn't apply to me. Yeah, that, that's, not, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are um, a lot of people think that if you have less than 10 employees, that OSHA's regulations do not apply. That is not true. Um, according to OSHA, if there is an employer-employee relationship, then the, that uh, OSHA regulates that. There's a few differences with companies that have 10 or fewer, such as you don't have to keep the uh, required annual summaries, your injury and illness reporting logs, the 300, 300A, 301. There's some of the required written programs like emergency action plans and fire prevention plans that don't have to be written. You can actually verbally communicate them. So there's a few little differences, but not much. But for the most part, OSHA's regulations apply even if you have one employee. So very nice. Thank no. you so much. You're welcome. Now, what if you don't know what a 300A or an EAP or a fire protection program is? What do you need? You need my HST class that I teach here at Reed Strine Academy, and I'll cover all of that. Along with? I don't know. The safety and health management system. Yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. <laughs> those things in conjunction, and you'll be able to learn exactly what those things mean. Very nice. Now, challenges to being OSHA compliant. What are the main challenges? Why aren't people OSHA compliant right now in many cases? Most of them don't know. Uh, a lot of times it's just a lack of knowledge in that area. But um, there was a study conducted by the Centers for Disease Control. It's called the uh, National Occupational Research Agenda. One thing that they found out was that the majority of companies in the construction industry are small businesses, uh, usually less than 10 or less than 20 employees. And what they stated was... Um, Many of those companies are less aware of requirements, but a lot of them that are aware uh, seem to be uh, non-compliant because they deem the cost to be unaffordable. They haven't figured out how to recoup the costs. So that's why we also have other classes like estimating and negotiating that can help teach you how to recoup those costs. Um, this stuff is required by law. And in doing so, you're gonna have to make sure that you account for it or you can lose money but we can help you with that too. Right. So why don't people just go ahead and do their written programs? I mean, it's, it's because those couple reasons, most of them don't know that they're required or they haven't figured out how to, uh, how to charge for those overhead expenses. And some of them don't even know where to start at. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do in this system is to teach you how to do this. And actually we will write your program specific to your company, but we don't want to do everything for you. What we want to do is help you at the start, get the things developed, train you how to do these things, and then keep up with you throughout your uh, life of your company to make things a little bit easier on you. And so I've really been putting a lot of stress on David about getting these templates done. And <laughs> I've aged 10 years in the past six months, if you can't tell. I have a lot of wrinkles. I That's didn't true. have them before. That's true. <laughs> this guy drives me crazy. His hair also turned red magically. We're not sure how that happened. actually turned white. Ooh. <laughs> and I lost a lot of it. And it's taken a long time looking up templates, but really creating our own documents that are specifically for the restoration industry yes. and tailoring that so that you can easily just type in the information that is for your company. And now you have a written program and now you are OSHA compliant. And one of the, one of the big reasons that we're doing this too is this can be, if you try to do it on your own, you're going to see there's a lot of templates that can be extremely comprehensive. The point with all of this is to not make it hard. The point with this is to simplify things down. Uh, safety and health uh, has got to be covered, but you need to make it to where it's easily understood by your employees. So the forms that we developed um, are going to be specific to your company, but we're trying to keep them simple to where it's not so hard to understand and doesn't take an extreme amount of time to actually go through everything. Right. And so we have here develop a comprehensive list of uh, many of the written programs that 
you are required to have, but that David himself has started making templates for um, so that you can fill in the information and get that done. Which one of these was the hardest one? Uh, right now, it's between the hazard communication and respiratory protection, but I've got to do the exposure control plan for bloodborne pathogens, and that one's going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we're doing a lot of the legwork so you don't have to, and the more that we've, uh, we have dove into this, it is, it's a lot of work if you try to do it yourself. It is a lot of work, especially if you don't really understand it, you're starting from scratch. Okay, so we're trying to help you with all this. And how long have you been an OSHA instructor? Well, I've never been an OSHA instructor. You know what I meant. I've been an OSHA authorized instructor. I don't know, like three years now? I think it's about <laughs> two or three years. And during this time, as you've been doing your research, have you found new things, new and exciting things? I find new things every single day. As a matter of fact, I have found several new things that I'm not going to speak about just yet until I actually get clarification from OSHA um, because it could be a... Um, it could be huge within this industry, but I have to get clarification from OSHA on some certain things. So yeah, I've learned a ton just by the stuff I've had to do. Right. Well, yeah. And being an OSHA authorized instructor. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Because if OSHA ever watches this, they'd get mad if we said that I was an OSHA instructor. They better not be watching this. We have less than 10 employees. Yeah. So, <laughs> so next, what is the REIT safety and health management system? So what is it? It says it's a management system designated specifically for cleaning, restoration professionals to make safety and health and OSHA compliance an easy and accessible task, at least as easy as possible. Now, what makes this a system? It's a mix of things. So we're gonna talk about the features here. Um, the mix is we train not just your technicians, but also your management. Um, so as we give you these documents, these written programs, we have training specific to the managers for um, each written program, how it needs to be filled out, but also some of the hazards that they need to be looking for um, as their safety program administrator um, so that they can take care of the technicians. And then secondly, we have another course that's specific to technicians. So now you're going out in the field. What are you gonna experience there specific to restoration and what hazards are there um, so that they also understand the programs I've also developed some of the things like JHAs and hazard assessments. Um, yes. So talk a little bit about that, David, please. Um, well, a couple of things first before I get into that. Get into it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, OSHA doesn't have specific regulations that apply to you working in a residential property. And that that's one of the biggest problems. If you look around at a lot of your major corporations, um, people working in warehouses, they work in the same facilities on a daily basis. So their safety and health systems aren't that difficult to actually produce because they work pretty much in the same conditions. The only time they have to revise them is if something changes within their facility. Now you have to have the same things for your office, but where it becomes difficult is trying to develop something that would fit for every single residence that you're ever gonna go in or every single commercial property that doesn't belong to you that you're gonna go in. That's where the problems lie. So this system is geared more towards developing programs specific to that type of situation instead of just working in one facility. And that would include things like developing a job hazard analysis or a hundred of them for individual tasks. So you can already have control measures in place. Uh, we also have a hazard assessment template, which is specifically designed to determine personal protective equipment. So remember PPE, is not an overhead expense. It cannot be by law because you're required by law to perform a hazard assessment on every single workplace. So we've developed templates for that to make it easy to just go through and just check boxes or write things in. Um, this system was put in place to try to simplify things down for every type of job that you're on. You need to remember something extremely important. Your employees have to be trained by law. They have to be trained on hazards prior to them ever going out to the job. It's part of the federal government's right to know act. For instance, if your people are using chemicals, you cannot hand them a chemical and tell them to go to a job site. They cannot work with that hazardous chemical until they have been first trained on how to read safety data sheets, understanding chemical labeling, all the hazards involved with that. 
This is going to help you to get all that stuff taken care of before you send your employees out to the job sites. It's a lot of information to actually go through, but we're going to take it one step at a time. And if you are saying, well, my technicians are out there right now and I haven't taught them a doggone thing. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, we can, we're going to go back, train your technicians starting from the point um, that you buy this particular program and train them on everything from reading safety data sheets to filling out um, hazard assessments or um, reading JHAs, all of that's included. And then we go all the way down the hierarchy of controls and talk about PPE, talking about electrical substitutions and, mm -hmm. and everything, yep. right? Elimination, all of it. So if you haven't done it up to this point, it's okay. That's yeah. why we've developed the system. There's nothing you can do about the past. The only thing you can do is pick a starting point and start from there. And I know as employers, a lot of times they're, they're concerned that employees might call into OSHA. Don't be concerned. First off, OSHA is not just going to come down on somebody. Okay. They don't have enough people to actually go around. If you have an employee that were to call into OSHA, the first thing that OSHA is going to say is, did you work this out with your employer? Okay. I hate saying it like this, but they don't like tattletales. Okay. They are going to come out. They're going to be looking at things. If it's an imminent danger situation, a death, something like that. Um, that's when you probably see OSHA on site, but they'll tell you, you got to pick a starting point, start and then fix your problems. That's why they have consultants. Okay. You can call pretty much any university in your state and get a consultant. The only problem with consultants that uh, work in these states is they don't understand our industry specifically. So don't have a fear of, of the past per se. You got to have a starting point, pick it, start your programs, and then move on. Then you can go back and address things from the past, like pulling safety data sheets from chemicals that you had 10, 15 years prior. Okay. But there's not a whole lot you can do about the past. Let's just find a place to start, start, and then move on from there. And little known fact, something that I Googled last week um, that I didn't know was that OSHA actually came up with uh, the saying snitches get stitches. So, yeah. And end up in ditches. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit more about our features. Problem number one, <coughs> figuring out how to train your team, what material to use for training. So here's our solution. Um, SMS, we have over 30 videos um, training on these exact things. And really, we also developed a series of application videos that go right into the field in showing um, a young technician being trained on many of the hazards that we're seeing every single day um, mm -hmm. in the restoration field. So problem number two that we find, no time or resources to create written programs. How have we resolved that? We did it. There you go. Yeah, we we're taking it. care of that for you. <laughs> now you just got to fill it in. We got the templates. You just fill it in. Problem number three, keeping up with employee training records. So what does that mean? What kind of records do they need to keep? Well, you have annual retraining for uh, uh, PPE requirements for donning and doffing techniques. You have annual fit testing for respiratory protection. You have annual retraining for bloodborne pathogen certification. You have annual retraining for hazard communication. And that can be daunting trying to keep up with the employees and when and what, what time and where that's got to be done. So we're going to help you keep track of all that. At least we're going to try to. Yeah, at least we're going to try to. <laughs> if you do your job putting the information in, we can do the rest with helping you and sending you notifications um, that it's time for the guys to get fit tested or it's time to retake the program and get recertified in many of these things. So yep. once again, trying to make it easy for you. Problem number four, making sure each employee gets PPE fit tested every year. We already discussed that. We just discussed that. <laughs> we just discussed that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so our feature overview, really, it's everything that we just discussed. Um, the written programs, the notifications, um, all of that built into one system for you and the training as well. And so how we've designed it is you pick out a um, what we're calling an SPA, a safety program administrator in your company. It's their job to take care of these uh, different assignments, whether it's completing the written programs for your company, watching the videos that are designed for the manager or for the SPA, and uh, putting these things in place for your company, um, doing the JHAs for the company. Keeping safety data sheets for all your chemicals, making sure that you've got chemical labels that are set properly. 
uh, they're, they're going to have a, a pretty big job. And that could be you as a business owner. You may not be able to hire one right now, and you may end up having to be that person. And that's okay. Just got to make sure that you sometimes have to take your business owner hat off and put your safety hat on when making decisions. Not a problem, though. We'll help you through that as well. And if you're looking for someone that could be a good SPA, um, we've recently uh, fired Meredith. And so she's looking for a position. Yes. Uh, so just hit us up and we'll give you her number. Uh, lastly, we're going to get into pricing. So we talked about how affordable is it before. One of the reasons that a lot of people um, don't have this safety program or do their written programs because of affordability. They don't know where to start and they think it's too daunting of a task and it's they don't know how to recoup um, these funds. So as we were discussing pricing on this, we tried to make it as affordable as possible. Um, we went through multiple different um, systems and how we can tailor this so that this changes our industry rather than making Rebecca a bunch of money. We need a Sarah McLaughlin music. For only pennies a day, you can save the life of an employee just by paying. <laughs> So, so this is our SMS pricing here. Um, we have a one-time setup fee of four ninety. One-time setup fee of four ninety-nine. <laughs> I say P. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Focus. We have a one-time setup fee of four ninety-nine, and then we also have a month. <laughs> I didn't eat breakfast, guys. I'm sorry. We also have a monthly subscription, which covers one to five employees six to 15 employees or 16 plus employees. So when you think about your employees, it's not just your technician and your SPA. Really, you wanna focus on your office staff, your techs, um, the SPA, your managers, everyone should be involved in this OSHA training, correct? Yes, everyone. Anybody that works for you because all your, employee, all your employees are covered under this. There just might be some things that your office staff may not have to do. Um, like if they don't, if they're not working in environments where it's required for PPE, they're not going to have to be fit tested for respirator unless you ever send them out to a job. But they still they still fall under emergency action plans, fire prevention plans. If you have chemicals in the workplace, if, you know, just them walking through the facility. Okay, it's there's still a lot of that that still applies to them. Right. Yeah. So that is your pricing description here, but for one time only. Okay, it's not one time but we have some early pricing. So this is our pre-sale pricing here. This is a one-time setup fee of $2.99. And then our monthly subscription uh, follows that as well. And for our REITs TV customers, um, you can contact Rebecca and uh, there's even more of a discount for you. Um, so make sure you talk to Rebecca about the pricing of SMS and how we can tack that on to your, uh, your REITs TV subscription already. So that is our summary here. Can you explain to them how you plan on releasing this to them? Yeah, when does it, huh? it come out? How is it going to come out? Is it just going to be all one big, huge program just shoved in their face? Or I feel attacked. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. So because this is such, um, it can be a daunting task if we throw all of it at you. What we've decided to do is do a slow drip. So middle of this month, we have our first module coming out and it uh, contains six videos. So three videos for your manager, three videos for your technicians, and it gets you a good start. Um, so it talks about JHAs. Um, it guides your safety program administrator through the JHA process and also the hazard prevention and control plan. And control plan. Um, so they can have a couple of months just working on those things, talking to the techs, talking to the office staff, figuring out how to do their JHAs. And then in a few months, we'll release the next module um, because that's going to take time to work through our next module as well. So we wanted to space that a little bit so that it's we're not throwing a year's worth of work on one person and saying, get it done. Um, so be kind to your SPA. Yeah. Um, but then as you finish it up, um, we're going to be releasing it every couple of months, um, a new module. And then after it's done, it will be about time to go through it again. And so this should be a continual process that you rewatch and we'll be adding things on as well. Well, we'll keep up with the changes with OSHA anytime they make adjustments. And if we need to, we'll adjust the videos accordingly. So we'll do a lot of that legwork. But even though that we're developing this system, we're not doing everything for you. We're taking a lot of the legwork out. OK, 
okay, and working with your company, but we want to help your company develop a culture. So we're not going to do all of your JHAs. We're going to do a couple, help you to learn how to develop them. We'll develop you other written programs, but show you how to fill in the blanks. Okay, we're going to work with your company to make this a part of your business. Well, that's all we got. So if you have any questions, concerns, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, if you don't have questions, you can just bow out after saying goodbye to Meredith and me, Nick. And uh, other than that, we hope you have a good day. For Reach Drying Academy, this has been the Reach Drying Academy podcast <laughs> webinar. <laughs> webinar. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. Do we have any questions? Not yet. Not yet. No questions. Nobody has a question. Good. It means we explained it very well. We'll stay on for the next five minutes or so if you have questions. If not, have a good day. No questions. Wow. What does that say? Hey, John. He says he already placed his order. Who's that? John Fields. Oh, hey, John. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's my question. Do I need to, I mean, do I need to keep asking, like, to place an order or is somebody going to reach out to me? No, someone will reach out to you. <laughs> yeah, so I asked to be number one. I heard I was number two, and I'm very disappointed about that. You're number one in all our hearts, John. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there are all two right. ways that we can do this. There's a link in the chat box. And also we have uh, online um, our website. You can purchase it there as well. Um, that is officially set up. Okay. So if I hit this link, that's going to take me there? It will. Yes. And uh, for Mr. Tremel. That is something that we'll be working on in the future. At this point, it is just English, but um, it's something that we will be working on. Thank you. Excellent question about being bilingual. That's super important. Super important for us. Well, I think Thanks. just talking, just talking OSHA language makes you bilingual. Hodges <laughs> is bilingual. <laughs> That's true. OSHA language plus exactimate language and plus S500. English. Oh my goodness. Plus S five hundred language. Trial trilingual. <laughs> but no, it's something that we're gonna work on for sure. Hey Hodges, I saw you shared my job posting. Thank you. Oh, you bet, brother. I try to help I out any time I can. And thanks, Hannah. We appreciate it. We appreciate your hard work. Yes, we do. Who's Hannah? <laughs> She's right there. <laughs> oh, hi, Hannah. <laughs> he has a computer. I can't see anything from here. <laughs> He has a computer too, but his isn't on. Yeah. <laughs> Just a black this is what we call a prop. Yes. <laughs> I was actually watching cat videos during the presentation. <laughs> Reruns of The Office. So where's the coupon code go? I agree to terms and conditions. So the coupon code is if you're using the website, John. Oh. So you can go on our website and uh, that's what. I, so I was using your hot link. If you're using the Cognito form, just fill yeah. it out, and Rebecca will take the discount for you. All right, tell her I'm watching. Your info. <laughs> she's also had her eyes on a really nice leather jacket that she said she was going to purchase with the card as well. Is that that was with John's card? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yes. It don't matter. I got women in the house. I'd never miss it. <laughs> Meredith also says she needs some shoes. It's all good. My uh, my youngest just graduated from college and got her first job. Nice. And she's uh, so she started work. Her first, you know, she's twenty years old. This is her first venture off into the, the career. She's starting at twenty four dollars an hour in the medical field, right? And so I said, hey, um, so you got your first paycheck. Daddy gave you a car. Perhaps you could return my gas card. And she's like, uh, dad, can I use it until I get married? I'm like, are you serious? 
<laughs> well, Meredith, uh, Meredith, John asked if you were still still a size twelve in men's. <laughs> what did I ask? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was I was gonna hit him in the head with something much harder than that. So if there's nothing else, if there's no All other right, questions, guys. please feel free to hit us up anytime, guys. Um, you can email Rebecca at Rebecca at reads TV. Yeah, I'll put that right there. She's gonna put that in the chat. Um, feel free to contact Meredith as well, just to make fun of her. And uh, we love you, love y'all, and we'll see y'all soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. See you, John.